If I was painting a pretty butterfly, I wouldn't mind coming out in the open and showing my face. Street artist Tyler imaginatively captures the spirit of any moment and ends up expressing it on Bombay walls which act as the perfect canvas for his descent. His art is raw, relevant and revolutionary. When I started doing street art, it was more for myself than the city. I was uh, more focused on what I am painting rather than what the city will interpret it. Eventually, I figured that uh, everything that I'm painting has, I mean, there is a certain influence on it. It's. Uh, the city has made me do street art. It's so. There's a, there's a quote by Banksy. It says, uh, "A wall is the nastiest thing you can hit someone with." In our city, there is no art culture. You see that we've been robbed of our public spaces, uh, our freedom to do whatever we want to. It's not a lot that I look for when I paint. I'm looking for a for an exchange of a dialogue. Uh, of course, they can't uh, have a dialogue with me in person, but uh, maybe amongst themselves is uh, what I'm looking at. Uh, element of vandalism and element of reclaiming public space. Uh, like it's you take permission to make a wall and you're beautifying the area. Yes, but graffiti at its heart is. Uh, not just about that, it's about claiming public space as your own, reclaiming it from advertising, reclaiming it from encroachment by private property. So, there, like that scene is there, but it's the street art scene that gets all the attention. And I'm much more interested in, honestly, like actual criminal graffiti. I like the criminality of graffiti. That's the point. <laughs> expression of art and the way it is experienced is changing and multimedia artist Sajid never fails to surprise us by harnessing the power and potential of interactive art. His sensory extravaganza amygdala anomalies got him a lot of attention. It is an evolving art piece that includes sights, sounds and smells. It's basically developed over a period of three years, three, four years. The idea behind it was to create like a book. You know, initially it was just a very simple thing where I wanted to create like, you know, a zine out of it and stuff. Because I was like sketching these really weird looking alien creatures in my sketchbooks and I had like tons of them. And it all compiled itself into becoming this experience where we got like some 14 televisions and uh, put all these creatures in them. And these 14 musicians who created these, this really absurd music for it was basically people were able to listen to it through their uh, through SoundCloud. People also really want to grow away from just seeing paintings uh, static, you know. I mean, though it's a great medium, but people are going to go towards more of uh, your interactive mediums. We kind of want to like blur that line between music and the art space, which uh, in India like is still fairly like they're very separate worlds and they shouldn't be. So I want more of that cross pollination happen because those ideas, art ideas, art theories can also inform the music that, it, that is being made. So interactive art itself like has to do with a lot of collaborations with a lot of different people. And for that to happen, you need to have those kind of resources. So that resources are happening now, you know. Just one person cannot sit down and be like, Hey, I'll code, I'll do the installation, I'll get the people, and I'll get the marketing done. So that's, I think that's the space where like interactive art is going to grow in, you know. Unlike Sajid, Tyler wants to detach himself from his art by staying anonymous. 
When I do street art and I try to paint a picture of the Pope holding a Facebook logo instead of the cross, I think it's, uh, it, it might offend some people. So it's better to not show your face. You know, if you are playing with subjects which are anti-government, anti-capitalist, you really cannot come out there in the open. Probably you might really be in big trouble. Tyler's fear is valid. With the fascist Indian ruling party, physically harming and arresting people expressing dissent. Coming back to the Indian art industry, 2019 was a strong year with sales worth rupees 685 crores, leading to a 21.6% rise. But it still remains a tricky business for independent artists. I feel like it's become much more difficult to be, say, an artist in Bombay, to be an artist from a like, socioeconomic background that's not fairly well off is much tougher than maybe it used to be 15-20 years ago. So you had a lot more diversity of opinions. Now, A, as it's become more intellectualized and B, uh, as becoming an artist become more expensive, it's become very like, there's a lot of rich people talking about issues, talking about politics, but the perspectives are still second hand because you don't have that much first hand perspective of people who have had those experiences. The people with the money will never want to really put it in the art and they always have the same logic that if you put it in the art, we wouldn't have had so much money to begin with. We are not foolish. So I can't argue with that beyond the point. You don't need somebody to represent you. You just have to put hashtags and people are just like, you know, coming to see your work and stuff. And that's where it is like your Instagram page is your gallery. You display your stuff every day and your gallery is 24-7 on. So that's the space, man. While artistic expression is vital, social responsibility is just as important. There's a blank wall on a road, you're entitled to go do you know, street art on it. But how good or bad it is, you have to find your own you know, yardsticks to measure that. And that comes with time, so I think the freedom's there to use, but you've got to be truthful to yourself. Are you really making something quality? Or are you just misusing that freedom and putting your shit out there? This is what I don't want. I don't want young boys to pick up the spray can and just go, you know, defacing the city walls. It's uh, somewhere I think that I am and I will be responsible for what I paint on the streets. But yes, uh, it's not in my control entirely. But probably if I paint some pieces which does not direct towards vandalism, I'm hoping kids will not take up spray cans and just doing tags unnecessarily. We live in undeniably polarized times where Sajid and Tyler believe in productive experimentation. Initially, it was really difficult to find a corporate who was willing to paint a mural in their uh, corporate offices. Now, like, you know, the inbox is filled with like people saying, like, telling you like, you know, hey, I have a startup office. Do you want to come in and paint? We're always in the sweetest spot with, with, with art because there's always a scope for art to explode. It is great to see Bombay artists questioning the aesthetic orthodoxies of contemporary art, which is the need of the hour, turning everyday emotions into art. With changing canvases, art is no more reserved for the art galleries or just the privileged. Thank you.